Greetings, says I, Tantus Nara van Dracoven, your Lord and Emperor here at the Dracoven Empire, and welcome to all of you. I hope you're having a great day, enjoying yourself. We're going to be talking about more tabletop today, as we normally do, and diving into Pathfinder again. And today's an interesting one, because this is technically one I will more likely revisit in a way in the upcoming future. And I'll explain it as we go over it, but in a previous episode, if you had seen it, I had done the basis of human ethnicities. Today I'm introducing to you the Tien, a human ethnicity that is technically a lot of them, but we don't know a lot about them. Why don't we dive in and start talking about it, and I can explain it. So, again, back to Galarian, back to Pathfinder, diving in. We're going to enjoy learning all about this and learning some of the, again, human ethnicity. And to start out with, I'm going to talk about the books that you can use for some of your own research that exist right now. And talk about a couple of books at the end here that technically don't exist yet. So the campaign settings, uh, Pathfinder Chronicles campaign settings, a book you can check out for some information. The Inner Sea uh, world Guide does provide some information because they provide information from areas other than Gurundin and Vastia. Um, they expand outside of those regions to a degree in that book. It's not a whole lot. But the last one is the Dragon Empire G uh, Gates of Tear, I might recommend. And there, are, um, there is some information spread in a number of other books. Um, but these are the three main sources I felt would be the best to check out that exist right now. So, these three books, you get some information on just Tianians in general, but there are two books that will be coming out between the end of this year and early next year. Uh, the Tianzi World Guide for Pathfinder 2nd Edition and the Intenzi Character Guide. So, I'm just move over an inch here. I need to do this one here. As we we chat about those two these books for a second, this is an important thing because we are talking about this element of an ethnicity and a group. And the thing is, there's an entire book coming out soon that's probably going to expand on a lot of this. And the reason I'm still talking about this today is because I'm making a generalization using the general information we have now. But as I'll talk about, very similar to Vastia, to Grund, to Casmer, and a lot of other continents, there are many distinct culture groups and ethnic groups within that continent. And the same is with TNZ. The problem is we don't have a lot on these ethnic groups. Now, we can't break down these subgroups of Tianians because we only know a little bit about them. That's what that book might give us. So while we'll talk about Tianians in a general today, we're going to go more exact, hopefully in the future, with more episodes based around these here. So again, it's a book coming out soon. We don't know exact uh, dates. It was announced earlier this year. And... We know that it's going to most likely be 2024 now. So early next year that we're going to get that. And so I'll start, I'll have to revisit Tianians then. But for now, let's talk about what it is to be a Tianian, um, the ethnicity of humans, in Galarian, in Pathfinder, as it is right now. You come from TNZ, it's very far from the Inner Sea. Those that migrate from there to Avastir Grund are considered a single ethnicity. One of the big things about this is there are majority of the ethnicities in Tien probably have less chance of traveling. There's really like two ethnicities which tend to show up outside. Not that the other ones don't also, but those are the majority of those that you will find. I'm just going to note that first uh, in a lot of the, at least how it's been published and shown now. So, this is an important thing. The Tianians of people are not a signal ethnicity. They're, they're treated that way when they are in um, the inner sea region because, again, it's this lack of recognition and understanding about the cultures and stuff because they are 
thousands of miles away from home. They are on the other side of the world. Um, so that's the big thing about Tianyans. They are, if you're in the inner sea region, if you're playing in where normally you'd play playing uh, Pathfinder games using Galarian, you're far away from home. That's not to say there aren't places where there are as cores of Tianian people settling in various places. Places like the Shackles, places like Brizia, some other areas within the Inner Sea can find small colonies and small groups of Tianian people, usually within larger cities and stuff. So, they exist. Their culture has spread. It's just, these are small bastions in comparison to the wide vast, uh, variety there. So, when we look at Tianians, a lot of folks from the Inner Sea, unfortunately, have difficulty differentiating between them. It's probably not for lack of maybe trying or understanding, but considering that a lot of the more major ethnicities, especially in the Inner Sea region, and if you're from one of those ethnicities, you can recognize a lot of the other ones. You've grown up around them, you understand them. There's various things that you understand in the subtleties of the differences that exist. Um, and the people of TNZ do have some common features, which do not help when trying to differentiate them. It would be like someone from TN getting someone from Avastia. The Avastian humans, with all their ethnicities, tend to be very similar in certain ways. There are some differences, but even around the inner sea, there are people that have similarities, though they are different ethnicities. It's the strange the same thing as, if you're far from home, you're going to have trouble with that. Um... Tanians tend to be a little smaller than an average stature, uh, than in stature than the average uh, Avastian or Grundy human. Uh, males are around five and a half feet tall. Women um, usually around five feet. Uh, builds are a bit smaller, uh, especially with members of the Tian Don and Tian Sing ethnicities, which we're going to talk about, um, who can often be look almost a little emaciated. They often have straight black or very dark brown hair, regardless of ethnicity. So hair color is very uh, standardized amongst the ethnicities. That's another thing that also doesn't help stand out between them. Uh, there are those born with pure white hair, which is viewed in all of the cultures as a sign of greatness. Um, eye color is the most populous amongst Tian ethnicity. Um, Tian Shu is brown which is the most common amongst the Tian in general, but eye color varies by ethnicity. Uh, things like the Tian Min of Minkai have a very huge variety of eye color. So that's one of the big ways you could probably tell the Tian apart is, generally speaking, eye color. But again, it's not a great way because it's the subtleties. It's the ethnicities recognize each other a lot more because they understand their own subtle differences between them that exist where there are other cultures, you know, in Avastia that have subtle differences, like things like, I gotta be honest, if you stripped Avarizia down to basically their undergarments, their Avarizian, they would be very comparable to other humans in the region. Uh, if you all stripped them down to their undergarments. Things like displays of culture and certain things like that are a little bit more stand apart. And yes, if you look at them as a group, oftentimes you will see things that will stand out more too. Again, it's, it's the thing of people from the same region tend to look similar, even if they are different ethnic groups. Y you can't really get away from that very often. So we're going to talk about a number of these ethnic groups, and I'm going to switch to one that we're not going to talk about quite yet. Uh, but I'm going to go over them uh, because these distinct cultures and people do represent ethnicities, but they also represent various regions and countries, too. Um, the first one, which this is going to be, uh, Tian Huan, which is going to be the third one we're going to talk about. Before that, we'll talk a little bit about Tian Dan. Primarily, they are found in the country of Zahoi. Um, they had some prosperity. They had a golden age, uh, which had ornately decorated, uh, pagodas, colorful dresses, spices, aromatic foods that kind of displayed this, um, Zahoy, just as a base information about it. Um, it is one of the successor states of the Lu Wang Empire, which had controlled much of TNZ uh, until, historically speaking, very recently. 
So Zahoy has had its its independence from the uh, Empire. Well, Zahoy was one of the only two nations uh, that were never part of Longwa properly, but it is considered one of the successor states to it because it was um, in that region with a lot of the successor states. It, it's a complex history of the region, which we're not getting into for different countries right now, but just know that it is a region that was separated and they have a little bit of their own ethnicity. Uh, common female names uh, of the Tiandan are Hai Min, Kui uh, Huan, and popular male names are Than uh, Lame, uh, Peng Tron, and Hu Tai. Uh, I'm probably butchering some of these pronunciations, so apologies. Uh, the second ethnicity we'll talk about is the Tian Tang. Uh, the Tong, Tong, it's got the DT, and I never know how to pronounce that. Uh, and they're from the nation of Tong Ma in uh, southern uh, Tiangzi. They were conquered actually right, uh, 20 years before uh, Imperial Lunghua collapsed. So they were only conquered for a short period of time before Lunghua fell. And again, um, the collapse of uh, Lunghua was in 4606. So keep that in mind that it is 4723 if you're looking at the actual time period. So this major global or, or continent spanning nation fell about a century ago. That's not a long time when we're talking about things. So there is a lot of the, and there's a lot of it, it, things going on with a lot of successor states and stuff too. But that's a, we talk about them when the TNZ books come out, you know, when we have a lot more on these. Because we know some basics, but we don't know a lot. Um, anyway, the Tian Dang people are seen by others as lighthearted and full of wisdom. They have slender builds, tan skin, darker uh, black hair is very common. The men oftentimes shave their heads, uh, leaving only single braid or top knot. Then we have who we're showing off here, uh, who is a Tian Huan child um, that I've got an image of here, and they're native to the nation, uh, the Tian Han of uh, Huangat. It's on southeastern Tian's northern landmass. They were long under Imperial Longhua and they've been able to reestablish their country and culture very recently. Um, it's known as the Kingdom of Flowers. So, again, they've recently begun to build their culture back up, but they're the people of this region. Uh, they are a people that have strong ideals on gender roles, though they are very different gender roles than most countries and most cultures. Uh, a large percentage of uh, Tianhuan women are soldiers and scholars, and the men are commonly farmers, craftsmen, and artisans. So, yeah, that's a very interesting way of uh, looking at gender roles in their society. And they're re re basically, they've finally gotten out from this imperial rule. They're getting their own old culture back, and they're getting a resurgence of that, I should say. Um... I don't have an image. Uh, I'll switch to the uh, next one we're going to talk about that I have an image of. Um, but it's not the one we're talking about next. Um, but there is a Tian Min. But we're going to talk about the Tian La first. So Tian La are semi-nomadic people that live in northwestern Tianzi in the realm of Hangul, beyond the Wall of Heaven. Um, uh, known locally as the Quang Tian. Um, Hangul is a region, uh, it heads over towards the crown of the world, uh, ending in Nora, the, it, it is one of the terminals of the path of Anage, which goes from the crown of the world to northern Avastia. It's basically one of the land routes that ends up in this area here. Um, it's got a very old, uh, uh, history to it, but it is a region, uh, more than anything. Um, and the Wall of Heaven is the no northern mountain range in TNZ with enormous size um, that covers many nations and kind of creates a natural boundary in a lot of ways. So these are people that are like over the wall. They're still in the continent technically, but they're beyond connections to your average um, uh, Tianian. Um, compared to the others, they have curler hair, paler skin, um, 
and consider others more sedimentary lifestyle, a sign of weakness. Their bodies are more mu muscular and stocky, and they have moon-shaped faces. Common male names are Tian, uh, for the among the Tianya are uh, Ganshuk, uh, Korchi, uh, Tamor Bat, Batar. Common female names are El uh, Alarden Dene, uh, Odval. Narantuya. I, I'm really butchering these. Sorry about that. And the breeders, uh, the leaders are known to uh, breed uh, thylacine called blood cougars as pets and hunting animals. Um, so if you do not know what a thylacine is, it is a um, it's extinct in our world, but blood cougars are a version of them. Uh, they're a marsupial. So um, keep that in mind. They the breed of marsupial uh, wolf creature, um, thylacine, as a special, special like subbreed called blood cougars as pets and hunting animals. Now, we have here, as image shown, uh, a Tian Min, who are from the Min Kai archipelago. Uh, they have a wide variety of uh, eye colors, uh, ranging from orange red to green violet blue. Uh, some have brown. Um, their culture places importance in honor and loyalty. Um, Minkai. Look, Minkai is basic. If you, if you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this here. A lot of these cultures have very similarities to um, sets of Asian cultures in actual our Asia. Um, so if you see similarities, yes. Uh, Minkai is a nation that never submit to Imperial Longwa and is known for its samurai, its stealthy ninjas, and honorable cultural identity. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Popular female names encode uh, Hiroko, uh, Ume, and Amaguma, uh, while um, for men it's uh, Shirota, Yuto, uh, Zaiho. So those are the Tian Min. Now I can quickly switch to one that we do have an image of. Uh, this man here is a Tian Shu, who are actually the most populous of the Tian uh, human ethnicities. Um, and they are found throughout many of the lands of Imperial Longwa and the successor states. They have one of the oldest cultures on the continent that even predates before Earthfall. And um, now a lot of their culture is broken into hundreds of smaller kingdoms and city-states. Their skin is slightly darker than other Tianian. They have almond-shaped eyes, straight black or brown hair. Common male names include Bao, Shou, Zen. Female names, uh, Mei Lin, Zhu, Chao. Um... We have a Tian Sing woman here uh, who live in the southeastern corner of Tianzi and the archipelago known as Minata or the Wandering Isles. Um, uh, so, um, their skin is darker than most other Tian people. Their hair is often a reddish tint to it. Green eyes are very common amongst the Tian Sing uh, than most other people in the continent. Female names are Inda, uh, Nirmala, uh, Udra. Uh, among men, Budi, Kusuma, and Suryo are common. And the final one, which I do not have an image of, unfortunately, is the... Uh, sorry. Uh, Tian Yai. Um, so, actually, no, no, I do have an image of someone who is related to them. Now, why am I using this image here? Because this is some, f someone from the Shori Empire. So the Tianyai are descendants of people from the Shori Empire in uh, Yanjie. Uh, so, the age of the Shori Empire basically would originate in the Mwangi expanse, but they had flying cities that kind of went over a large, you know, uh, portion of the places in the world. They had flying cities they were known for. It, there's a lot about the Shiori Empire to talk about, but known that they had their original uh, origins in uh, Mwangi, but spread throughout a region during the Age of Destiny. Um, and that's basically the time when the Syrians were originally settling their thing. And uh, in Ij, 
is one of the last flying, su uh, surviving flying cities of the Shuri Empire. And so there are people living there that are descended from them. Uh, they have the darker sin, straight hair of their ancestors, and are tuned to air magic. I can't really tell you much more about them other than the Shuri Empire has a flying city left over from their fallen empire there in Yaijie. So the, you know, it technically still exists, but really, uh, most of them went into their own cultures and places like there. Most of the sky cities fell, you know, um, you really have um, one city left over from that. Um, so, I mean, they are Tianian, but they are a unique ancestry because they can probably trace some of their uh, their ancestry back for ages. And they've been in a region and exist in that region and probably, you know became something new in there. But we can trace their regions to the Shori Empire. Um, so that's an interesting thing to know and talk about there. Alright, we have a few more things to talk about when it comes to uh, Tiani and Sus and and this is... Uh... Thanks, motorcycles. A venture captain of the Pathfinder Society that is a Tianian. So, the thing is, I'm not going to go deep into cultural history of Tianians because it's the unfortunate thing that you'd really want to go into each of these cultural groups or perhaps the nations they're connected with. And it's again, as much as I'm visiting some stuff uh, with today in the stream that I'm having in the video that I'm producing, I am only doing a little bit of this and this is going to be like a revisit kind of thing. So this is on the opposite side of the world than the inner sea um, and wasn't really connected for a very long periods of time. They had numerous uh, different people. They existed uh, that since before the fall of the Starstone and even after it. Um, and the current reckoning form that they're in is about 7,000 years old. So there's a lot of like history in this region that exists there. And there have been three great empires that have risen and fallen in that region, which the last one we've talked about just a little bit to yet today, the, um, you know, mentioning... We didn't have uh, certain countries fall to, the, of course, the uh, Longwa uh, Empire. They were the last of the great empires which conquered most of the continent. Um, and yeah, collapsing 100 years ago, not very long, you know, but is a very new history. And so a lot of cultural rev revolutions have been occurring across Tianyin Z because of this, because there was the Imperial Longwa was best described as pretty um, forceful in a lot of their ways and stuff like that. There's more to dive into a long law and stuff like that. But generally speaking, they conquered and controlled the continent pretty iron fisted. And now the cultures, the area is having a reinvigoration. Good afternoon, Warren. So it's a continent of big size. There's a lot of native religions uh, that are found here that are not found in other places like Avastia or Garund. But there are some uh, uh, deities that are worshipped in this side of the world that are connected because of uh, Vudrani missionaries. Uh, like Iori uh, was brought to Tianyin. Um, and uh, there are places that worship Iori as a state religion. Uh, there are those that immigrate to the inner sea and adopt worship of local gods there. So, again, you really have to look to the individual cultures and cultural groups when it comes to religion. Um, Tianians in general prefer a loose-fitting garments, uh, no matter social standing. Um, brightly colored, robe-like clothes are very popular to those that can afford it. Elaborate embroidery with nature scenes, exotic animals like dragons and phoenixes. Um, poor will make do with uh, simple kits, trousers, uh, linen wraps, of course, leather jackets for the upper bodies. Um, all Tianian cultures, almost all of them, have this interest in brighter colors, and um, only those that are the poorest will wear undyed cloth. So even as soon as you get to like a little bit above the poorest, 
you start getting like some dyed cloths and some nice colors and stuff into your clothing, it shows that, you know, you're part of the culture. And that's, again, it's not all of the Tianians, but a lot of them do. Uh, of most of them and most of the cultures uh, are known to value family and genealogy. And a lot of the nobility in most of the nations trace their ancestors back to a very few dozen generations. So, uh, or a, a, at least a few dozen generations. So you will see that, you know, genealogy is very important to a lot of their cultures in the, in the continent. It is a universal thing, a, a nigh-universal thing. So it's something to talk about. Uh, a Tian Shun king could tra claim to trace their lineage back 11,000 years. They have inter like you information on this. Um, it's also said that the Tianian peoples gained their genealogy knowledge from dragons, who the dragons of Tian are known to obsess over their lineage. Uh, another big thing that is very Tianian and is in a lot of Tian, and is in most of the Tianian nations, again, for a combination of the great empires that were there and their common, the, the slight commonalities in the cultures and mixings over the years, is tea. And tea ceremony. Tea is taken very important in the in most places in Tianian culture. Um, it's prevalent in all walks of life and all levels of society, and it is much more than alcohol important on the continent. Not that you couldn't find alcohol, but you will see tea before alcohol. Uh, couriers from the ancient empire of Yuzing uh, basically formalized the tea of dr drinking, the or cha in their language. And, you know, another, it's another ancient empire that existed on uh, the continent, which helped spread it across the continent. Um, and it stayed in that. Um, and that was around 2664 AR, about 2000 years ago. Um, and these customs have grown into the tear ceremony that it is now. Um, and uh, some decades later, visitors to uh, Teikoku, which became Minkai, uh, copied and created their own tea rituals. And uh, today, uh, Ch Chodoa, or the tea ceremony, is practiced in uh, Longhua, Zaihao, the Tangma, um, and it's got its own version in Minkai. So it's a, it's. In a lot of regions, you have it because of the cultural exchange and, of course, some ancient empires spreading it over a lot of regions. So you can see that these are things that are fairly universal to a Tianian. But again, as I've talked about, there is basically eight main cultural groups in ethnicities in here. And each country takes its own version of that. And especially with the fall of a massive empire that was the, you know, uh, <laughs> our good friend here, the uh, uh, Lungwa, well, there is a lot of shattering of countries and stuff and, and a lot of fracturing and these smaller groups of like unique versions of these ethnicities and stuff like that kind of breaking apart where a single ethnicity is, is harder to think. Like, it's sort of like a lot of countries that we've talked about, and honestly, Avasti and Gurund, they might have similar ethnicities, but each of the countries takes that ethnicity in a slightly different direction. And it's very much so the same here, that we have certainly a lot of these ethnicities singled out in various regions, and maybe even certain countries, but they then tend to dissinuate. And especially something like the Tian Shu, who... Honestly, there really isn't a single country you can point out about that. A lot of these other regions and countries have a core of where these ethnicities from. This large, big central population, the largest population of all the Tianians, doesn't really have a core country. So, again, a splitting that happens. So, I definitely will revisit this entire thing when the Tian... Uh, the book comes out properly and what i'll probably do is i'm going to hope to be able to visit each of the tianian eight subgroups and define them as their own ethnicities a little bit more and kind of maybe talk about them a little bit more on their own and maybe because depending on how much information is provided a couple of them in an episode obviously i, I don't know 
but we'll kind of visit them, talk about them, hopefully re-jump in and kind of discuss them. And certainly a lot of their countries I will talk about also in the upcoming months, or when that comes out too, during that time period. So, you know, these are things that we're going to revisit. Um, but for now, I hope you learned about uh, Tianians a little bit and, and got interested and got you a little bit anticipation for that, you know, upcoming book. Mm, be excited about it. It opens up an entire region of the world that is well-developed. As much as Galarian has a lot of information, we find that places like, you know, a good chunk of Avastia is shown off, Northern Garun, uh, Casimir, these are the continents that we know a lot, and there are technically other continents in the world, and Tianian, and Tianzi, is a big continent where there's a lot of people and they just we just haven't had the main visiting like this book is going to be and it's it's going to be good it's going to introduce us to a lot of stuff and you know anytime we have stuff that introduces us to a new area of this world is really cool and interesting and it gives us more in developing glare and i i'm all for it so let's look forward to that but I hope you enjoyed learning about them then um, and their various different subgroups and gives you an idea of like when someone talks about Tianyan, it's a lot more than just one group. There's a lot of them and they're very different from each other, very different cultures than each other. Again, with a few similar veins, but it's something that maybe you want to look into if you're interested in being from TNZ. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you're watching this live, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for joining me back back end here, Worm. Uh, I'll always uh, leave a comment in chat. A comment for today would have been, um, have you played a Tianian character? And that'll be actually our question for when this goes up on YouTube. Have you played a Tianian character? Leave me know in the comments. But remember, uh, uh, following on Twitch is really great. On YouTube, a subscription, a uh, like, uh, ringing the bell if you've already got both of those things done. You know, just to keep up with the uh, videos as they come out. Um... I do have a Discord and Twitter, uh, twitter.com. Those are places to see my social, that's my social media links, uh, scheduling information, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to look forward to seeing Tabletop live, it goes up. Uh, these talks like this are every Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, early afternoon, Saturdays, late morning. And uh, yeah, I do some other Tabletop related stuff a live show every Wednesday night, and, of course, a discussion show every Saturday evening. Um, I guess that's all the shout-outs I have for today. You know, I try to remember all my stuff to shout-out. I try to give you people information, and I just hope you have enjoyed the videos, stayed to the end, and honestly, you know, learned a few more things about anything I'm talking about. But for now, I'm going to get going, and I'm going to say to all of you out there, farewell until the next time.